Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn that a word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this position, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do give, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, um, and to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that we might live. Let's uh, go ahead and open up to um, Luke chapter 5, verse 33. We're going to talk a little bit about parables. I mean, last time we went through the book, we started off in the Old Testament, we started to break down all the parables and stuff, so I figured we'd do that again. <clears throat> This is uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 33. Baby, you mind bring me a water? Bring me a cup of water? <laughs> like a water or two? I'm thirsty out here doing the Lord's work. Verse what? It's verse 33. It's Luke 5, verse 33. Watch what do you say here. And they said to him, why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, can you make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? All right, so he asked the question, can you make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? In other words, if there's someone about to get married, should this be a sad time where you starve yourself, or is this a time for feast? All right, so he said, is it appropriate to say, you know, all you have to fast in the middle of this celebration? He said, there's a time for everything. Let's hear about it. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, mm -hmm. and then they shall fast in those days. All right, he said, soon the bridegroom going to be taken away. Then they can fast, right, because there ain't a celebration no more. All right, so that's what he's talking about. He's talking about himself as the bridegroom. He said, right now. Don't impose this stuff on these people, right? These people with me, I'm here, right? We playing by a little bit different rules now that I'm here. Soon I'm going to be gone. When I go, y'all can do everything y'all were doing, right? So he's just letting them know right now, we're doing stuff a little different. You're going to see some different stuff happening right now, right? Let's see. Keep going. A lot, a lot of Christians look at that and they say, see, this is how you know the law is done away with, right? If they use that logic, though, let's, let's use it, right? If you was to lose, use that logic, that means that soon the bridegroom going to be going away, Right? So we know bridegroom is Yahushua. So soon, bridegroom goes away. That means we got to keep the law again. It's law done the way we're, right? Either way, it's going it's to catch him up if they try to twist what the Lord is talking about. Keep going. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man puts a piece of a new garment upon an old. He said, no <laughs> man puts a piece of a new garment upon an old. Keep going. If otherwise, then both the new make a rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agrees not with the old. And no man puts new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles. Right. And spilled, and the bottles shall, shall perish. But where are you going to put the new wine? But new wine must be put into new bottles. And where the old wine go? And both are preserved. You got to put the old wine with the old wine, the new wine with the new wine. Right? You got to put the new wine inside of the bottles that's already, it's brand new and it's brand new. We good. Right? It's wine skin. Right? We good. You know what I'm saying? That way when they expand, it, it expands together. You put one that's already expanded, you fill it up with some new wine, which you know going to have to expand some more. It can't expand no more. That thing going to burst. Same thing with a shirt. Every time you get a shirt, you get it by that thing, it's going to shrink. You know it's going to shrink. Every time you throw that thing in the washer, that thing going to shrink every single time. So now you're going to get you a shirt that's already shrunk and get you a brand new cloth, put it on top of that shirt to patch it. What do you think going to happen when you wash it? It's going to shrink. And when it shrinks, it's going to rip your shirt or make it weak. Right? That's what he's saying. He's saying there's an appropriate way to do everything. You have to put everything in its place. He said, when I'm telling you this new stuff, try to make it fit with nothing old. You got to make the old fit with the new. Grab, um, grab uh, Leviticus. Before we grab a Leviticus, grab Jeremiah. Grab Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. 
Jeremiah, what? 31, 31? Yeah. It's Jeremiah chapter 31. For it shall come to pass that I will make a new covenant, not according to the one that I made with your father. You don't know nothing about that, boy. <laughs> This is Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So that's new wine. And where are you going to put the new wine? You going to put it in the old wineskin bottle? Not according to the covenant. That he I said made. not according to what? The covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. What sense would it make for Yahushua to come here with a new covenant and say it's according to the old covenant. That would burst it. That's what he's sitting here trying to tell you. It's a new covenant. It's not according to, to, to the covenant I made with your father on Mount Horeb. Right? We look at it, he's trying to let us know it's not the same. Right? This is something different. So we have to acknowledge that. The Hebrew Israelites and the Christians alike. It's new. And the old is not done away with. He's telling you there's an appropriate place for all this stuff. And after he get the, after the bridegroom gone, you gonna have to go back to what y'all were normally doing. And it don't take away from the new. All this stuff running together. Everything got to just put, be put in this appropriate place. That's what learning the word, this whole book. That's what it's about. Putting everything in the. Appropriate. What you think? What do you think Paul meant when he is like uh, uh, rightly divide the word? We just talking about division. When we talk about division, what are you really doing? Putting it in this place, putting the equal parts with equal parts. Right? If something is divided, you know what I'm saying? Let's do some math. If something is divided by three, what does that mean? You got three buckets. So three divided by three means that each bucket got one. Right? Six divided by three means that each bucket has two. Right? Everything has to go in its appropriate place. That's what we look at when we try to learn the word. When we try to break it down, we try to make sure that this goes with this. This will goes with this. Here a little, there a little. Line on top of line, precept on top of precept. Everything in its appropriate place. The book ain't going to tell us nothing different. Go back to uh, Luke 5. Grab me a hotel so I can wipe this up. It's Luke 5. I think we, what, what verse we? It's Luke 5, verse 38. It's Luke 5, verse 38. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. Mm -hmm. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desires new. He, he said, says, no man who have drunk old wine is going to straightway desire the new. So if I got some old wine and I drink it, there's no way I'm going to be like, I want some new wine. No, nah, what I'm going to want? Some more old wine. Look what he said. For he says the old is better. <clears throat> they always going to tell us the old is better. Does that make sense? Yeah. The old wine is much better than the new. It's Leviticus chapter uh, 26, verse 9. Leviticus 26, 9. That's why, I like that. That's why that old wine costs so much money in the store. Old wine gonna be better. You gotta do it. I got some Merlot. You talking about the? He he gonna light you up in this whole parable. You don't know. These Christians don't know what he darn talking about. They like the New Testament. You did okay. So why he say the old wine better at the end? He trying to say the old covenant better? They don't know no word. You know the book. You know how to put everything in the appropriate place. It start to line up for you. It's Leviticus chapter twenty six verse nine. Watch this. He said the old wine is better, right? Yeah. Watch this. It's Leviticus chapter 26, verse 9. You see that whole thing makes sense. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. Mm -hmm. And ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old store because of the new. When the new come, you're going to want to eat the old stuff. That's been our law. We've always been like this. He said, I'm going to make you fruitful. I'm going to add some new stuff onto you. And when it comes, guess what you're going to want to do? Eat up the old stuff. 
The old is always better. When y'all shoe will come, what you think he talking about? New stuff? Sure. Then guess what he remind you of? The old. How you going? Okay, so when he trying to explain, he got, he got done telling everybody about who he is, right? And what his father going to do and how, and how they going to see some wonderful things, right? They still didn't know who he was, right? It wasn't until the book say, if we go to uh, Luke 24, we ain't got to go there right now. But if we go to Luke 24, the book tell us that he explained to them what parts of the book? Everything in the law and the prophets and the Psalms concerning himself. The law, the prophets, the Psalms concerning himself. And after that, how'd they feel? They knew him. Book said they knew who he was after that. Yeah, he said, return me to the glory that I once was before the world began. You give somebody the new, that thing good, all right? They don't be like, but the old better. You give them that old, now they got perfect understanding, right? He expounded on them all things in the book to give them perfect understanding. That's how it works, and that's what we try to do. This is Genesis. We left off last week. We were talking about, uh, not last week. We left off a few weeks ago. The New Testament is like this thing. Old Testament is like that thing. That thing supported. I mean, people, when you build a building, right? Let me see a pen again. You build a building. I mean, people going to, like, make the foundation like this. And then, and then you're going you to have a whole building like that. How much sense does that make? What's going to happen in this building? That thing going to fall over. That thing going to tip. As soon as the wind blows. As soon as the earthquake happens. That building gone. Right? You make a building, you're going to want to build something deep. That thing got to go like this. Build it all into the ground. The higher this is right here, the more you're going to want into the ground. You're going to want it wide. You know what I'm saying? Because you know that this could tip over. So you need something down here to support it. That don't make no sense. So that's why you got the Old Testament that's thicker. Right? That's why it's more word, more history. All right? Because they got to support something new. This is, uh, this is Genesis, uh, I think Genesis 27 is what we want. We left off a few weeks ago before our feast came up. Uh, Left off talking about uh, Jacob, and uh, Jacob was, well, you know what I'm saying, we know that Jacob had had uh, had his mom, or his mom rather had Jacob uh, steal the the blessing from uh, Esau, all right, so after he stole that, that blessing, Esau was upset with him, um, then uh, Jacob went off, and he kind of went on his own, and uh, we talked about, I think the last thing we talked about is Jacob going to uh, Bethel, and he named Bethel, all right, Oh, he saw the angels and um, the descending and ascending. You know, he said that this is the house of God, and he ended up calling it Bethel. All right, so that's what we look at. That's kind of where we left off. We kind of talked about um, what's appropriate in, in, the, in the eyes of the Most High God and how we should approach Him. Um, so now we're gonna kind of continue on. And, and I don't know if we talked about it before, but we have to understand the reason why Jacob went off because he, you know, Esau was about to get that butt after he stole his blessing. All right, Esau was about to get that butt. So uh, go go to uh, this Genesis 27. It's Genesis 27. Give me uh, verse 41. As you try to catch up. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. Mm -hmm. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father at, are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. All right? So he said, I'm going to kill him. All right? That boy messed with me. I'm going to let my, I mean, my, my pop about to die. So I'm going to let, you know what I'm saying, the morning get done with that. When that thing done, though, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to slay it. Right? Watch what mom say, though. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau, that's touching you, does comfort himself, proposing to kill you. Now, All right, he said he make himself feel better by thinking about killing you. All right? The thought of him killing you makes him feel better. Mom noticed that. She's like, these my sons. I know how my son is. My son a hunter. He'd do it. She like, that's crazy. What do you think she did to her favorite son? Let's see. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice and arise. Flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran, and tarry with him a few days until my brother's fury turn away. Until your brother's fury turn away. Until, the bro until your brother's anger turn away from you, and he forget that which you have done unto him. Then I will send and fetch you from there. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? Mm -hmm. And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do, do with me? 
All right? So you remember, Jacob ended up going to Laban to get a wife, right? Then we ended up talking about um, Isaac and how he got his wife, right? And how they went up there and we talked about all those things. So that's why Esau ended up getting a wife and, and getting one from Ishmael, right? Because he was like, oh, I see. He already had a Canaanite wife. And he was like, oh, I see. I think he had two. You know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, I see. You know what I'm saying? I need to get me a wife of our brother. So he was like, all right, let me go ahead and holler at Uncle Ishmael. You know what I'm saying? I get one from him, then we'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? So he went and did that, got him a wife, and he thought that that would please his, you know what I'm saying, his mother and father a little more. All right? But that's how it started off. Jacob went, he got up out of Dodge. So then he went with Laban, he ended up getting his wives, right? He ends up getting, uh, uh, Laban ends up tricking him. You know what I'm saying? He ends up tricking him into getting, getting the two wives. He first wanted Rebecca, I mean, I'm Rachel. sorry, uh, wanted Rachel. And then after that, you know what I'm saying, Laban was like, you know what I'm saying, well, you know, we don't do that around these parts, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, I promised you her. And I ain't saying you can't have her. I'm just saying that Leah got to come first. So he, you know what I'm saying, he ended up uh, 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 tricking them into uh, marrying Leah then getting them to work seven more years for uh, Rachel, all right? You so want to marry my daughter? They got to work for me for seven years. You know what I'm saying? You know, seven years, boy, Laban here. You know what I'm saying? It's Genesis 31, though. Let's see what we can get. It's Genesis chapter 31. We'll just try to try to pick our parts through here and through uh, Genesis and see if we can uh, capture most of the story at least. I take it easy on them. I just be like, you know what I'm saying, just, just, just cut my grass for seven years. And we good. And bring me a lamb or something. It's Genesis 31, 36. And Jacob was wroth and chode with Laban. And Laban answered and said, and Jacob answered and said to Laban, what is my trespass? Right? So at this point, Jacob trying to get out of Dodge. He didn't work all this time for him. He trying to get out of Dodge. Laban has chased him. Right? So after he gets chased, he turned around. He just frustrated. He's like, listen, man, what, what did I do wrong? What did I do? You know what I'm saying? And here what he said. This is a case he made. What is my sin that you have sought hotly pursued after me? You mm -hmm. have so hotly pursued after me. Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. Mm -hmm. This twenty years have I been with thee. How long? Twenty years have I been with thee. Thy eyes and thy she your, wait. Thy ewes and thy she goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. Mm -hmm. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee. I mm -hmm. bear the loss of it. Of my hand did thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Mm -hmm. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in your house. I served thee fourteen years for two for your two daughters, All right, and he's six telling, years like, for my cattle. I served you fourteen years for your daughter. I didn't even want the first one. Book say, I mean, she is tender on her. Ain't that what the book say? Book say, Leah, Leah was tender on her. Right? He said, I wanted Rachel. You slid Leia to me. All right. Yeah, you know, I worked seven more years. I still want Rachel. So he worked the seven more years. Got it. Then after that, he said, I worked six additional years. Tell him about it. And six years for your cattle. Right? So he worked six additional years for cattle. Right? We're going to look at this stuff and we're going to see as we read through Genesis and we get to Exodus, we're going to see what our laws are really talking about. Right? A lot of our laws that we get are addressing issues that we've seen through Genesis, right? And then stuff that hadn't even come up yet, right? But that's, that's what our laws do. So we'll talk a little about it when we get into the law. Keep going. And you have changed my wages ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, the, in the fear of Isaac had been with me. Surely you have sent me away now empty. Mm -hmm. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee yesternight. Mm-hmm. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle. All right, so when he said these daughters are my daughters and these children are my children, he's talking about his two daughters and then the children that they had. He's saying all this is mine, right? He's like, you're my servant, right? All this stuff is mine. Now he goes on later. He wasn't saying that trying to, first he, he was trying to give him perspective. Like, you was my servant. These my daughters. You was under my roof. All this is mine. Your kids, all this cattle, all is mine. But if we keep reading, he's going to say, but, you know what I'm saying, the most High God told me to ease off of you, so I'm going to leave you alone. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to do you no hurt. 
I just came out here. Most like God said, I can't do good or bad. I can't say good or bad. You know what I'm saying? I just came out here, you know what I'm saying, just kind of, you know, send you off. Let's make an agreement. So they end up making an agreement, right? But they had children, right? And all this time, he had children, had a whole bunch of children. Uh, go, to, go to Genesis 30. One chapter back. This Genesis, Genesis 30, let's start at verse 1. Let's talk about the kids. 31. Mm-hmm. Because these are the kids, from these children, all of Israel are populated. It's populated. We just in 31. 30, I'm sorry. If I said 31, I meant 30. It just is 30. 30 verse what? Verse 1. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead who has withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Mm -hmm. And she said, Behold, my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees. Right. I may also have, bear, have children by her. Right. So we've seen this before. Right. We've seen, we seen Sarai do the same thing. Right. She's like, oh, I can't have no kids, so, you know what I'm saying, go into my maid. Right. So now Rachel is doing the same thing, because Rachel's like, I'm your wife. I'm the one you want. I can't have no kids. I can't afford that. Right? So she was like, man, just, you know what I'm saying? Have some kids by my servant. Keep going. And she gave him Bill, her, her hand, handmaid, to wife. And Jacob went in unto her. And Bill, mm -hmm. her conceived and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God has judged me and has also heard my voice and has given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. Dan. Does that mean judge, right? You started at verse one? Yeah. Okay. Dan. Keep going. Yeah, Dan mean judge. It should it, it, it should it, I think he just said it. Read that verse again. God has judged me. Yeah, God and has, has judged me. my voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. Mm-hmm. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. Mm -hmm. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a son. And Leah said, A troop comes, and she called his name Gad. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Mm -hmm. And Reuben went in the days of what? And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest. And Reuben found was the very first son. You know what I'm I thought I thought I thought all the sons started off right here, but they must uh start off in the chapter before. We we don't have to get it, but uh, Reuben was the first son. Keep going. And found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Mm -hmm. And Rachel said to Leah, "Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrake." And she said unto her, "Is it a small matter that you have taken my husband? And wouldst thou take away my son's mandrakes also?" Right. So Leah was like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Got some mandrakes, you know what I'm saying? That's what we do over here, you know what I'm saying? My boy, he picked the mandrakes. And then, you know what I'm saying? Rachel was like, listen, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They did a little switcheroo. You know what I'm saying? They do the switcheroo. She was like, you know what I'm saying? But you you think it, you already got the man, you know what I'm saying? You want my mandrakes too? You know what I'm saying? So they switch off. So let's go ahead. And Rachel said, therefore, he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening. And Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. Mm -hmm. And he lay with her that night, and God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God has given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband, and she called his name Issachar. And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God has endured, endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. Mm -hmm. And afterwards she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened unto her and opened her womb. Watch this. So this is, this is Rachel's first child. After all this, everything was going on, any child that came was by, the hand, by a maidservant. Right? So this is Rachel's very first child. After all of these children were born. Right? This is what? The... the the 11th? 7th? No, well, Jacob was probably the 10th. I mean, Benjamin. Well, what's the name? Joseph was probably the 10th. You know, I think Benjamin was the 11th. 
Wait, no. Yeah. Benjamin uh, Joseph was eleven. Yeah. Yeah, and Benjamin was twelve. Yeah, that's right. And she conceived and bare a son, and said, "God has taken away my reproach." And she called his name Joseph, and said, "The Lord add to me another son." All right. So at this point, this was the last son before they got out of Dodge. They end up having another son named Benjamin. All right. Benjamin is the last son they end up made. So he's the twelfth son from Jacob. Um, uh, but that was after they started the journey a little bit. So from Jacob's point of view, he old, right? He old at this point. He got all these kids, so he old. From his point of view, he looking like, goodness, this is the wife I love, right? Matter of fact, go to uh, go to Genesis uh, uh, thirty. Go to Genesis. Where do I want to go? Go to Genesis. Go to Genesis forty. We'll back into it. Go to Genesis 41, actually. So Genesis 41, verse 8. All right, so this is the this is the boy that Jacob loved because, one, it came from the wife that he loved, right? This is the light wife he actually wanted, Rachel, right? She couldn't have kids all these times. He had all these kids. But finally, in his old age, he gets a child from the wife that he actually loved, the wife that he wanted a child from. So immediately, that becomes what? His favorite boy. That becomes his boy. You know what I'm saying? So that, that caused some issues, you know what I'm saying? He get, you know what I'm saying, some stuff. We'll, we'll try to back into it. But first, let's go to Genesis 40. This is after Joseph is already in Egypt, right? So it's Genesis chapter 41, actually, verse 8. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, mm -hmm. and he sent and called for, a magi for the magicians of Egypt. This is, this is the Pharaoh, right? So Pharaoh had a dream. His spirit was troubled. He called for the magicians because he wanted them to interpret his dream. Let's hear about it. And all the wise men thereof and Pharaoh told them his dream, mm -hmm. but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servant and put me in the ward and the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, he did interpret. All right, so he, excuse me, he, in, he interpreted their dreams. This is Joseph who they're talking about. So Joseph was in jail. This is a man who remembered being in jail with the man. He was like, okay, yeah, I remember. Now that you're talking about these people can't interpret your dreams, I remember there was somebody who interpreted my dream. He was a Hebrew. We was in jail together. You know what I'm saying? When the Pharaoh was mad at us, he put us in jail. We was in jail together. You know what I'm saying? So he told us that. Grab, uh, grab uh, verse 37, I mean, chapter 37. Chapter 37, verse 18. Because now I just want to I just want to kind of pinpoint why he went to jail. Or how he got to that point in the first place. Yeah, so Pharaoh was a part of his wife was fast. That's what. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's, the, yeah, that's what happened next for sure. <laughs> it's Genesis 37, um, verse 18. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they this said, "This is his brother." So this, all them brothers that we just read about, all his brothers felt that way. They talking about Joseph. He was like, "Listen, you know, <clears throat> excuse me." He was like, "Listen, <clears throat> we don't like the boy because that's Pop's favorite. He always snitching on us." Joseph used to go and you know what I'm saying, give give Pop's an evil report. The book said, you know, what I'm saying? give him like, man, them, they over there, they ain't really working. I ain't really working. And he was the favorite. He had a coat, you know what I'm saying, many colors, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody else had that coat. They looking like, man, we don't mess with him. Don't come around here. You know what I'm saying? He's like, you spoiled. You know, that's how he looked at him. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, yeah, you know, he's 17 years old. Or that's something grown. You know what I'm saying? He's still working for Pop. You know what I'm saying? He running they mad, running his mouth against him. So they didn't mess with him at all. They hated him. You know what I'm saying? And they was looking like, all right, well, here he come. Here he come. Here he coming this way. Everybody stop. You know what I'm saying? He's going to step on us. You know what I'm saying? So here it go. Watch this. And he said, wait, where was I? 18? Oh. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay them, to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer comes. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beasts have devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. So they wanted to kill their own brother, right? They're going to cast him into the pit, leave him there, and just say, you know, some beast killed him, and tell him. Right? Tell a pops about that. Right? Let's keep going. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. 
All right, so Reuben was the oldest son, right? Reuben was like, eh, let's not kill him. All right, I don't want to kill him. Let's hear what Reuben's plan was. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out, that, that he might rid him out of their hands. All right, so he's like. him into the, to his father again. So he's like, listen. Just throw him into the pit. Don't kill him and throw him into it. They plan. They go kill him. Throw him in the pit and just leave him there. You know what I'm saying? He's like, eh, don't kill him. Just throw him in the pit. All right? Throw him in the pit alive. Let him be there alive. And then Reuben was like, I ain't going to tell them. But after they do that, I'm going to go back, save him, take him back to Pops. Yeah, Reuben was like, I ain't crazy. You know what I'm saying? Reuben like, I know. Reuben the oldest. You know what I'm saying? He's all these, all these young boys. They silly. You know what I'm saying? Reuben was like, listen, I ain't crazy now. I ain't about to kill my little brother now. That's crazy. Pops gonna have our heads. We do something crazy <laughs> like that. So he's like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just throw him in a pit. Once y'all do it, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get him. So the older brother had to trick the younger brothers to do it. You know them younger boys rowdy. You know what I'm saying? They probably would have jumped on Ruby. He's like, boy, we about to kill him. He kill you too. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. Just throw him in a pit. Leave him alone. You know what I'm saying? And he's gonna sneak and get him. Let's hear about what actually happened though. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brother and that they stripped Joseph out of his coat. They took his coat. This is the coat that his daddy gave him. It was a coat of many colors, the and book said. a coat of many colors that was on him. Mm -hmm. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty there. was no water in it. Mm -hmm. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry down to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Judah said unto his brothers, What profit is it if we slay Who our said brother? It? Judah. He said, what profit is it if we do what? Slay our brother and conceal his blood. He said, if we if we end up killing him and concealing his blood, what do we get out of it? He said, man, let's get some money. You know what I'm saying? We see the, what were the Ishmaelites or Midianites? Ishmaelites. Right? We see them Ishmaelites right here, man. We might as well deal with them. All right, let's see. Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh, and his brethren were content. All right? This is uh, Genesis chapter 39. He sold him. He ended up selling Judah. Ended up selling them to uh, to uh, the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites ended up selling them to Egypt, right? So he ended up becoming a slave in Egypt, a servant in Egypt. So this is uh, Genesis thirty nine, verse uh, six. That yeah, boy Reuben was mad when he went back to the pit and he wasn't there. Oh yeah, Reuben freaked out. <laughs> Reuben freaked out. He was like, "What in the world did y'all do?" You know what I'm Reuben freaked out. So they ended up, you know, what I'm saying, taking his his uh, his coat of many colors. I think they killed the animal, spilled some blood on it, and took it back to Pop and say that he got killed. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Reuben, Reuben was a little upset about that. He felt guilty the rest of his darn life. Oh, if I would have met back up with y'all, I was like, bro, like, I know you might not believe me, but honestly, I was I was down out. for that thing. I would have snitched on all my brothers. I was like, I was going to get you out, I promise. Oh, they sold him to Egypt, Pop. <laughs> they sold him to Ishmaelites. They probably killed him, too. So this is uh, this Genesis chapter 39. Give me verse 6. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a godly person and well favored. Right? Goodly so person So this, well this is, I forget what his uh, his rank was, but this is a ranking. You remember what he was? He might have been a captain of the guard. Or captain like, of the guard, yeah. It he was, was like Pharaoh's something. He was something important. Yeah, it's, it's like a high ranking person in Egypt. You know what I'm saying? They, that, that he was... He was yeah. commissioned to work for. Captain of the Guard. It was Pharaoh, Captain of the Guard. Pharaoh's officer. Yeah, yeah so is a, he is a Captain of the Guard, you know what I'm saying? And and this is who... Um, it's like a general. This is who uh, uh, Joseph had to work for, you know what I'm saying? He is a servant to this man. So the man actually trusted Joseph. He left everything in Joseph's hand. He was like, I mess with you. I trust you. a trustworthy dude, you know what I'm saying? So he left everything in his hand. You should leave him alone. Look at what happened. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me out of, kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. What do you think he mean by do his business? They were taking a poop. 
boy had to use the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? That boy trying to use the bathroom. And what, nobody in here. He wait till everybody leave. I do the same darn thing. I'm at work. I don't like pooping everybody there. I be like, yeah, y'all go ahead and, uh, you know what I'm saying? With 2 two thirty, y'all, we're all right. You know what I'm saying? Then I go in there and lay one. You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to sit here and do all everybody there. I don't like no way. You know what I'm saying? Boy, big old boy, you know what I'm saying? Sitting on the stall next to you, see a feet poking over. I'm like, man, I ain't even got to poop no more. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time for I don't all like that stuff, that man. Either, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Jacob, you know what I'm saying? He's one of our people. He's looking at it. You know what I'm saying? He's like, wait till everybody leave. Ain't nobody here. All right, then he go do his business. You know what I'm saying? Let's hear about it. And there was none of Big the Big old toes of the popping house. up under the thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I look like, you know what I'm saying? Staring at your toe. I'm trying to have a comfortable poop. You know what I'm saying? I'm used to pooping in my own darn saying in my own darn home. I gotta look at somebody's feet underneath some stalls. Or like, God wow. forbid I smell your butt, boy. <laughs> right, I, oh it, man, I'm done. You know that thing. Oh they get man, farting and stuff. Oh and yeah, that thing just like, messed up. I ain't even gotta poop no. I'm supposed to enjoy my jello. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? That thing crazy. Go ahead, my fault. And she caught him by the garment saying, "Wait, go again." And she caught him by the garment saying, "Lie with me." And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. That boy got loose. He's like, man, man I ain't about to do that. Man. That thing crazy. He got loose. But his garment was in her hand. So after that, what she did is she say, he raped me. Right? He started saying that she raped I mean, she started saying that he raped her. Right? Then after that, the, the guard, he was like, you know what? You going to jail. Right? He's he messed him. with him. He no. messed with him, though. He's going to kill him. He messed with him, though. You know what I'm saying? It was like, man, this is my man. I can't believe this. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, that's his wife. No, nah, he was going to kill her. He was going to get at him, yeah, right? But then the wife was like, no, don't kill him. And then that's when he put him in jail. And then put his butt in jail, right? But he messed with him, though. That was like, you know what I'm saying? This is my man. I can't believe you did this to but him. He knew Joseph didn't rape her, though, after the wife was like, don't kill him. Yeah. And so he just put him in jail. Because he knew he was a trustworthy man. So then he ended up putting him in prison, right? So that's how he ended up getting in prison. And that's how we ended up getting to this dude. That's telling the Pharaoh about his dream, right? So go back to 41. Huh? No, he ain't in there taking a poop. You know yeah, what I'm saying? He, he, he thought about a garment. He probably took his little, you know, they wore the little robe. Probably took the little yeah, thing. Fresh he probably, out. You know probably, probably naked, running, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, he is naked. She do got his clothes. All right. He tried to rape her. He is either peeing or poop. You don't know which one he is doing. You know, he's doing peeing or pooping. I like to think he was pooping. I like to think he was pooping myself too. <laughs> I just, it just kind of seemed weird that she trying to get it in. You know what I'm saying, the homie? You know what I'm saying? He's pooping. You know what I'm right. saying? Like smelling up the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? She still want to get it in. So I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Either way, you know what I'm saying? The homie is like, we good and got up out of dodge. You know what I'm saying? You know somebody saw him running around there naked. So you know what I'm saying? So when she said he raped him, they believe it. Our people. Still get caught off on that type of thing. Ain't nothing changed. These foreigners, they ain't, they ain't Gentiles like these Gentiles, but they still Gentiles. Yeah, well. It's uh, Genesis chapter 41. Give me 37. All right? That's what they said when they freed the slaves. That's what they was like. They're going to rape. These slaves, they're going to rape all our women. That's when they went to go kill us for no reason because they thought we was going to rape the women. Just like that. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and all the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed you all this, there is none so discreet and wise as you are. All right? So this is after, after uh, what was he, the cupbearer? Or... Didn't the cupbearer die? He was... The baker. No, he was the cupbearer. He was the, the cupbearer. Baker, baker died. Okay. So it was a baker and a cupbearer. They both had dreams in prison with uh with Joseph. Joseph told them about their dreams. One of them, he is like, your dream mean you gonna die. You know what I'm saying? The other one, he is like, your dream mean that you gonna be restored. You are gonna be back in your position. So he said, listen to the one that gonna be restored. When it happened, don't forget about me. Right. Tell, you know what I'm saying? Just remember, you know what I'm saying? Just don't forget about it. Some years went by. So he did forgot. I mean, he did forget. He got restored. But then when the Pharaoh said, hey, I had a dream, and he was, you know what I'm saying, he is upset about it, he was like, oh, no, I should do what I was in prison with. He can interpret your dream. So he called him up. He didn't actually interpret the dream. He told Pharaoh what the dream was, right? And it ended up being that the dream meant that it was going to be seven good years followed by seven bad years, to seven years of famine. You know what I'm saying? 
So then after that, he didn't stop at that. You know what I'm saying? Him being a prophet, the most high God gave him a message behind that. So he didn't stop and he said, this is how we should handle it. You know what I'm saying? Seven good years, store it. Store everything good, right? Store it away, put it away, put it away, put it away. Right? Huh? I think he's at a fifth part. I don't remember. You know what I'm saying? I don't remember. It, it should be right there if you want to scan over it. it should be up. But um, but you know what I'm saying? You you store it, you store it, you store it. So you store as much as you can in that time period. Then, followed by the seven bad years. When you have the seven years of famine, then you will have some stuff that you can get to the people. What it ended up doing, it ended up making where Egypt owned pretty much all of that area in the world. You know what I'm saying? That's how Egypt became an empire. Egypt became Walmart, bro. Under us. You know what I'm saying? Under our management, Egypt became... It became an empire. They started to, they started to, because now when I'm hungry, I'm one of these nations, right? We've been storing. Only pe- it's a big famine, last seven years. Only people that got food is Egypt because they've been storing, right? Just like our law just told us, you are going to want to go to the old because of the new, right? So they storing stuff, make sure it's old. So when it's famine, we got old money. We good, you know what I'm saying, in Egypt. Then all the people going to have to come to Egypt to eat. So when they come to Egypt to eat because they ain't got no food, they got to sell something. When they run out of stuff to sell, they got to sell themselves and they got to become servants. So when they become servants, now Egypt owns them and that's how they became an empire and they ended yeah. up owning First them. First it was like, take my money. Then it was like, well, I got no money. Well, take my land. They ain't got no more land. It's like, well, take me. And so they end up working the land, you know what I'm saying, growing stuff. So when the famine is over, all the stuff that grow, that's all Egypt. So like now you got all the food and all the real estate. You good. And all the people. You good, right? So that's that's how that's how Egypt became big, right? That's how Egypt became rich. That's how it, be, it became so powerful. They was already good and powerful, but that's how they really, really start taking over under our management because of the most high God. So now watch what happens. Where was that? Uh you should have oh, been it. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Thou shalt be over thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word. Shall all my people be ruled? Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Right? What does he mean by that? When he said, only in the throne shall I be greater than you. You know what I'm saying? You the, you the man except for me. Like, I run this, but you right under me. He said, I'm the only person over you. You run the whole shebang. You Can't nobody, nobody say else. nothing to you. Except me. Except me. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. I'm on the throne now. Boy, don't get, don't, don't, don't don't get, get it twisted. twisted. <laughs> now, I'm still on the throne. But you the man around here. Right? So Pharaoh gave him all the power, right? Keep going. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And look at that. All knees bowed to him. All right. Look at that. It's like the father and the son. All right. Grab uh, Genesis uh, 31. I mean 37. I mean 43. And then 37. This Genesis 30. Uh, I'm sorry. Genesis 43. Verse. Um, give me Genesis 43. Give me about verse 20. It's Genesis 43 verse 20. So what's happened in this time, he's running the show. He's the man. He ain't thinking about his brothers. They ain't thinking about him. But seven years of famine. So what do you think happened to our people? We got home, right? So everybody, just like everybody else, Jacob, he was like, man, going down there, boys. To the other 11 boys, he was like, going down, going on down there to Egypt, get you something to eat, right? We got to get some food. We don't know nothing about Joseph being there, right? We just sold Joseph off to Ishmaelites. We don't know what they did with him. We think he probably, they probably killed him or something. We have no idea. We don't know that he running the show down there. So he's like, you know what I'm saying, just go get some food. So all the brothers went out. They went to go get the food. He kept Benjamin back. You know what I'm saying? When they went to go get the food, it was like, you know what I'm saying, what can we do? Immediately, Joseph, he recognized him. He was looking like, is that right? You know what I'm saying? Is that right? So he was like, he was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? He was like, y'all need some food, huh? Pretty sure he was pretty angry. What's your, what's your pop's name? Where your pops at? Where your little brothers at? Is this everybody? You know what I'm saying? So they had to, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Well, one dead, you know what I'm saying? And uh, then the other one, you know what I'm saying? He uh, he's staying home with pops. 
No, he Jim Benjamin came, right? No, 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 no. Benjamin. He didn't come. There. He came the second time. Second yeah, time. yeah. Like he still on the pop. He like go get your brother and uh, you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? He kept. Uh, he kept. Uh, who he keep? He kept. Uh, Was it Ruben? No, it wasn't Ruben. He kept uh, Simeon, I believe. You know what I'm saying? He kept Simeon back. He is like Simeon can stay here. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go bring Benjamin back, and y'all can have Simeon back. You know what I'm saying? He played a couple tricks on them too. He put a little, you know what I'm saying, the money that they paid, he put the money back in their sacks so that he can accuse them of stealing it, make their hearts drop. You know what I'm saying? And so they got back home, they like, oh, Pops, bro, we, we still got the money. So Pops tripping. He like, and y'all got to bring Benjamin back? And y'all stole the money? You know what I'm saying? He's like, man, y'all about to take both of my youngest boys from my only wife. Remember, Benjamin and Joseph came from his wife that he loved. So it's only one more boy that came from the, the wife that he loved who's no longer with us because she died giving birth to Benjamin, right? So now you want to take my boy. You, you just got to imagine how much this is on this old man. He's super old. So he's looking like, man, listen, man, y'all tripping. So he ended up taking Benjamin. You know what I'm saying? Then this is about where we are right now, I think. I don't want to say 43. You should be about right. Huh? Ruben what? He was like, take me instead or something like that. No, I think I think Ruben told Pops it's on me if we don't come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he is like it's, it's, it's on me if something happens, something to that that degree. Yeah, Ruben, you know he is the wise, he is the oldest. You know what I'm saying? The wise, even though Ruben did some mess up stuff too, but you know what I'm saying? He is the oldest and the wisest. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What is that right here? And said, "Oh, sir, we come indeed down at the first time to buy food, and it came to pass when we came to the end." And we opened our sacks, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack. Our money is full weight, and we have brought it again in our land. And other money have we brought down in our hands to buy food. We right, cannot... so he, what they're saying there, I don't know what happened. We got back home, we still had the money. Listen, this time we brought the same money, and we brought other money to buy map. We ain't steal nothing from you, because they shook, right? They like, man, somehow this man going to think we stole from them. They probably been counting their money. They see. They came up short because of us. They scared, right? Whole time, Joseph messing with him. He putting him in, because he, low-key, he's upset. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, he trying to teach him a lesson. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, you know what I'm saying? He kind of put, he put these situations on them. They still don't know who they're dealing with, right? Watch this. Watch when they see his little brother. And other money have we brought down in our hands to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. And he said, peace be to you. Fear not. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money, and he brought Simeon out unto them. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he gave their donkeys provender. Mm -hmm. And they made ready the present against Joseph. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to him to the earth. And he asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom ye spake? Is he yet alive? And they answered, Thy servant our father is in good health. Right? He they think, I mean, from their point of view, he just looked like another Egyptian. They think he's just an Egyptian. Right? They still talking to him. They don't know who he is. You know what I'm saying? Watch it. Keep going. Watch what they do. And they answered, Thy servant our father is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obstinate. Obesence. What's obesence in school? What is that? You mean like pay respect or something? That means you bow down. Grab uh, grab uh, Genesis 37, verse 1. It's Genesis 37, verse 1. Genesis chapter 37, verse 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father evil report. See, so he's snitching on him. He's telling on him. Right? Keep going. 
Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brother, and they hated him, mm -hmm. and could not speak peaceably unto him. Mm -hmm. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it of his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. All right, keep going. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed, for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. Right? So now you see at this point, the, the sheaves that he had in place, they bowed down to him. Right? That was his dream. He had a dream that all these sheaves were coming in place, and they would bow down to him. Watch this. Keep going. And his brethren said unto him, Shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Mm -hmm. And he dreamed yet another dream and told in his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. And he, told to his, and he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? All right. Shall what I? Is Okay. Shall I and my mother, shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? See, bow down. That's what it is. It means that they bow down, right? So, and then you see that's exactly what happened, right? All his brothers ended up bowing down to him. He was the ruler over Egypt, right? And he ended up bringing all those people into Egypt, and all the people had to bow down to him, right? The whole world had to bow down to him at that time because he was running it. He was running the show, right? Wasn't nobody else doing it. Grab, uh, grab uh, Matthew chapter 27. Let's see how Joseph is the Messiah. All right, he got put into a, put into a pit with no water. Yeah, nothing in it, no water. Y'all sure did the same thing when they killed him. They killed him, they put him into a pit. Right? To a tomb. With nothing in it. Your buddy bad. Come get your little brother, boy. Twenty seven, what verse? Uh one. When the morning was come, all of the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Yahushua to put him to death. Mm -hmm. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Uh huh. Then Judah, which had betrayed him, when Who? he when Judah, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver and the chief priests and elders, All right? Saying he he sold them out for thirty pieces of silver, All right? Thirty pieces of silver he sold the man out, All right? And his name was Judah. How much you think? Uh, how much you think uh, the brothers got for Joseph when they sold him? Twenty pieces of silver. Same thing. They both got sold for silver, All right? And guess what? In both cases, it was a man named Judah, All right? Joseph is the Messiah. Grab uh, First Peter chapter three. This first Peter chapter three, give me verse eighteen. The Pharaoh put him on the throne. He said, "He said the only way I'm better than you is on the throne, right?" I mean, he said at the right hand, all right, just like the Father. You don't see Yahushua say Yahushua is gonna go up and sit on on the Father's throne. No, he's gonna sit at the right hand of the Father. But the Father is gonna be greater than him only in the throne. That's it. Everything else, he put it all in his hand. He's going to put everything underneath his feet. He said the whole, he said every knee shall bow. What do you think happened when Joseph was going through? When Joseph was, was riding on it, when, when the Messiah had to be introduced, he, got, he, started, he came through on the coat, didn't he? Right? When Joseph got introduced, they put him in the carriage. He said right on through. And they said to everything, let the knee bow to him. Right? Every knee shall bow. Joseph is the Messiah. Look at this. Uh, this is uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For the Messiah also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, 
being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. By which also he... What did he do? By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. In where? Which sometime were disobedient in prison. He went to prison too. But you think it was different? Joseph had to go to prison. When he was in prison, he had to go tell some people his dreams. Right? What do you think? He's he preaching to him. He's letting them know, look, you're going to live. What do you think? What do you think the Messiah was telling the people when he went to the prison? He'd tell them about the life that's in the Father that was given to him. Right? He ain't telling some of them, y'all but going to hell. That's why Joseph had to tell others, he's like, you're going to die. Why do you think Joseph had to tell one person you're going to live and the other person you're going to die? He had to. He ain't had no choice. He knew the Messiah. That's what the Messiah came to do. To pronounce life and death. Right? Because judgment was given to him. Grab, uh, grab uh, Genesis uh, 37, verse uh, 23. It's Genesis 37, verse 23. Genesis chapter 37, verse 23. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren, that the spirit Joseph, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, mm -hmm. his coat of many colors that was on him. Mm -hmm. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Mm -hmm. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brethren? conceal his blood. Mm -hmm. Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him. Mm -hmm. For he is our brother in our flesh. Mm -hmm. And his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites merchant, merchant men and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites. How much? For 20 pieces of silver. Told y'all. Silver. 20 pieces. Right? 20 pieces. It's Luke chapter 3 verse 21. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. 3? Mm -hmm. Or 23. No, Luke chapter 3. Yahushua came on the scene. He had to be baptized. When they put him into the pit, and then the, the Ishmaelites had to bring him back, back out of the pit, what do you think that was? Book had to tell you no water in it. I had to make it clear, right? This ain't the, this ain't the thing. Couldn't be done until until Yahushua came to do it. But when they put him inside the pit and they had to bring him back back out the pit, what do you think it was like? It was just like a baptism, right? Book already say when you baptize, you baptize into death. They put him in a pit because they're gonna let let him rot. They're gonna let him die, right? Then they're gonna bring him right back out of the pit. Watch this. This is Luke chapter uh, three verse twenty one. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Yahshua also being baptized and praying, mm -hmm. the heaven was open. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And the voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son, and thee I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua himself began to be about 30 years of age. Whoa, hold on. The beginning to be how, how old? About 30 years of age. Watch this. This is Genesis chapter 41. It's Genesis chapter 41, verse 46. And Joseph was 30 years old when he How stood. Old? 30 years old. When, when he what? Stood, when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. When he was running the show, 30 years old. When Yahushua came on the scene after he got baptized, introduced his king, 30 years old. Right? He's the Messiah. It's Acts chapter 2, verse 22. His own brother sold him. Yahushua's own brother sold him. They tried to kill him. Yahushua's brothers killed him. 
right? He rose up. He offered forgiveness. Yahushua, Joseph did the same thing. Watch when Yahushua did. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 22. You men of Israel, hear these words. Yahushua of Nazareth, the man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you. As ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the de determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. So you see how Peter, he went right to him and he said, y'all did this. Now watch uh, verse uh, 40. It's Acts chapter 2, verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this unwanted generation, untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. From that, he forgave them, right? And they were able to join them. What do you think Joseph did? When they came to Joseph, what do you think Joseph did? He saved them. Right? And he forgave his brother. Grab a, let's end off with Genesis 50. This is one of my favorite parts of the book. It's Genesis chapter 50, verse 15. It's just how God works. So why we can't be walking around here sitting with all this unforgiveness in our heart? Even these people that do us wrong here. We got to think bigger than this stuff. Somebody didn't let you get the job because you was black. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, you know what I'm saying, didn't look out for you the way you looked out for them. And all this stuff that we be looking, thinking about, man, you got to let some of this stuff go. You got time to be worrying about these people. You got time to be worrying about none of this stuff. As soon as they come back, they looking for help, you help them. You look out for them. You do good with your people. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, most I got to set your butt up. It's uh, Genesis chapter 50, verse 15. When Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly require us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Look messenger. how guilty they feel. You don't think these people feel guilty? They shoot our people down. You don't think they feel guilty about this stuff? You ain't got no time to be sitting here worrying about these people. God got all these people. He's setting us up for something bigger. We just got to make sure we step in and assume the position. Joseph did. All right? Joseph walked up and he handled his responsibility. He, sit there. he could have had all his brothers killed. They tried to kill him. He could have had every one of them killed. Nobody would have batted an eye about it either. He set them up. They stole my money. That would have been it. He, I, they got, we didn't get paid for that. They stole the money. What do you think Egypt would have did? They would have gladly killed them Hebrew boys. He could have had all of them killed. Would have had nothing to do. And went to go get his pot. And like, listen, man, I don't know what happened. I tried to clean it up. I don't know how they died. They messed up. They tried to steal some money. He just killed them. But listen, I'm running the show over here. You know what I'm saying? Come on. It would have been him, his little brother, and Pop. You don't think he attempted to do that? Of course he was. That's a man, a guy. He ain't about to do no fooling just like that. That's crazy. How you going to line up with the Messiah if he do something crazy like that? That's our problem. We ain't trying to line up with the Messiah. We ain't trying to walk like him. We ain't trying to walk like him. It's better than, it's, but we in a better position. Yeah, at least we got an example of him. He hasn't tried to do it before. Keep going. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Mm -hmm. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. But as for you... Ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. He said, when y'all did that stuff, man, y'all thought evil. And y'all were trying to do something wrong. But God used that same thing that y'all were doing to bring us right here. Y'all bowing down to me and me telling y'all, get up. I ain't in the place of God. What you think? All right? Get up. I'm y'all brother. We good. You know what I'm saying? Y'all eat good. Y'all live good. Y'all all right. Pop's gone now, man. Let's be together. That's the type of people we got to be. That's the type of people that the Messiah calls for. 
That's why you're about to be on the outside just like these sinners, man. You got time to be worried about these people holding on all this bitterness. Christians and Hebrew Israelites and, 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 and white folks and all this other stuff, man. Let that stuff go. You ain't got time to be doing that. So ain't no way we're going to line up. Ain't no way we're going to line up having all that stuff. All that stuff alter all our decisions. You know what I'm saying? All, every, everything that we look at, it alter, it changes. You got too much of that stuff, it's going to weigh your decision, you're going to be unbalanced, and now you're a lawbreaker. Just because your, your feelings hurt about something. All right? We don't have time for it. Let's go ahead and pray out.